Hello and welcome to today's cryptocurrency technical analysis where we're going to be going over the recent rise to the upside here on the Bitcoin chart and how we have the potential of if we break out of this range a rise to around $40,000 here on the Bitcoin chart. So I'm going to be going over that scenario in today's video. I'd also like to educate you on why we saw this move to the upside, what's going on right now, and what we're looking for next, really over the next few weeks. So what on this video really it's very important that you pay really close attention to what I'm saying. Mark out some of the levels that I'll be giving you that we'll be trading towards over the next few weeks. And also just make notes of some of the little golden nuggets that I'm going to be sharing throughout this video. As James says, what are the best traders in the world? We're going to be starting off, of course, with the magic line. How this scenario and how this pump really happened, like the, the, the intricacies behind this move that one has to you know, truly understand to then understand what's going to be happening next. OK, so without further said or do, let's get into the video. And I hope that you thoroughly enjoy this one. I'm going to keep it, you know, I'm going to actually keep this one really professional and concise. Exactly. The information that you need. So yeah, let's just get straight into it then. So we obviously know Bitcoin originally had put in a low around $25,000, saw a rally to the upside. And I'm not sure if any of you can remember this, but if you've been following for the last few weeks, we had a, that key level around $28,000. Obviously, in the end, re you know, we tested that level, retested it again with your really big bullish CVD divergences before this move pushing up towards Sunday. And obviously continuing that Monday yesterday. OK, and there's a few things that I want to educate you here uh, before we get into what's happening right now and, and happening next. And that's the, the internal range that we had going on. Remembering how I've been teaching you, uh, we have the value area low, the point of control and the value area high. We look for the longs down at the value area low and we look for the shorts up at the value area high. OK, and within this, obviously, we've got a trading range. We're trading from highs to lows to highs to lows. What's been going on for the last few weeks? And we hit yesterday the top of the value area high. And I actually lent bullish at the value area high. And I want to ex explain why I foresaw this pump coming up. OK, why, even though we were at resistance, why I was not that interested in the short and expecting this to break up here. OK, and, you know, now now I'm obviously back trading. I'm, I'm getting back into this professional focused mindset. No messing around. So I come into my group yesterday and really simply just laid out all of my plan. I saw that we were forming bullish CVD divergences, and this is something truly you need to pay very close attention to. Even if you're an expert trader, here I'm going to be sharing insights and statistics. Okay, so it's really important that you pay attention. Um, yesterday we were forming these bullish CVD divergences. This is on the Bybit BTC USD chart. Okay, so we're forming these bullish divergences up at, up at the value area high. OK, but you can see what I'm actually saying to my team here. I actually want to see something like this. OK, and that is a move to the downside. This is oh, okay. you can. Oh, yeah, you can see this here. Uh, <laughs> um, you I wanted to basically see this, this move, this push to the downside. OK, to stop out a lot of traders before, obviously, a, a, a move to the upside. Overall, I was expecting price to come up and take these highs. I was expecting a push above the value area high. But my thought process is. I'm going to explain this as we go along in a bit more detail, but my initial thought process is, OK, we're starting to see these bullish CVD divergences on Bybit. Uh, across the other exchanges, we're actually seeing various CVD divergences, but I knew Bybit had the highest probability of playing out overall. But I was looking to basically see the overall low there at around $30,000 remain intact, not take out the $30,000 low, but build another higher low within this. Okay, we obviously have the daily, which I'm going to show you in a minute. Um, and then, yeah, push up and continue up higher. Okay, and these are a few of the statistics that I want you to just remind, remember here. OK, so first of all, we start forming bullish CVD divergences on Bybit at the value area high. OK, so this is an idea of, OK, we want to be a bit careful here on the, you know, on the medium term picture of the day trades because, you know, we have a high probability of pushing up here. And these are, you know, the, the next question that I was asked was, hey, Daniel, for example, on FTX, on Binance, um, you know, we're seeing like um, bearish CVD divergences. OK, why, why are you expecting overall a push above the value area high and breaking up towards $32,000? And this is basically what I went on to explain during the day. Uh, yes, I already, obviously, I, do, I, I checked the, all the exchanges uh, all of the, the time to compare to form statistics. And I said, yes, I already know this. Bybit against BTC USD has bullish CVD divergences. Bybit against USDT Tether has none. Uh, FDX had bearish and Binance had bearish. OK, so I go on to say from my statistics, though, Bitcoin uh, BTC USD on Bybit has the best win rate. So I pay the most attention to obviously the Bybit exchange order flow. 
Okay. And I think I want to give a few more examples here of, you know, how this has played out literally over the past few days. So look at this morning at the 4 a.m. price action. This is obviously yesterday at 4 a.m. Uh, we hit the NPOC price forms mas massive bullish CVD divergences on Bybit, BTC USD, and we break upwards. Bybit was the only exchange to show strong bullish CVD. You know, some people, uh, you know, I've, I've seen this a lot in the comments recently that some people say that I have just a, you know, a bias with Bybit as that's where I trade. Um, but the truth is, if you look for yourself at the major pivots, Bybit gets the best order flow, you know, time and time again. OK, I obviously do track the other exchanges, as I'm always open to saying another exchange takes over and is better than Bybit. But at the moment, they are still the best. Thus, that's where I trade. OK, and, um, you know, more than happy to help people. And then I go on to give a few more examples. Obviously, the low that we formed off of the twenty five thousand dollars in the retest. Guess what you had? Really big bullish CVD divergence is there again on Bybit. So really, over the past few days, it's been the only exchange to give a 100 percent heads up win rate. OK, so why have I just explained this to you? First of all, uh, it's really important to be aware of these divergences at major levels in the chart. It's then able able to like recognize the, co you know, the context that we had here was obviously the, the US holiday and being able to catch a lot of people offside. In my opinion, I was under the opinion that a lot of people have missed the low. A lot of people are really bearish and a lot of people are sat waiting for lower. So if we get this reaction of, you know, this first initial move to the downside, it's going to get everybody really bearish once more, thinking the breakdown is coming, and then reverse it. Reverse it straight up to the upside and push it back up towards that $32,000 level. This was my idea, and this is the one and only idea that I had throughout the day. You can see I'm very, remaining very concise and professional while giving my you know, thoughts and statistics. Okay. Well, obviously... You know, we, we, we kind of got this and then we, we're still remaining patient, waiting for Bitcoin to drop. OK, so this is obviously the initial idea was posted around 1044, you know, 11, 12. I'm still thinking to myself, OK, we, we need to remain patient here to, you know, wait for another move to the downside. OK, we, we're waiting for it to take some lows. And when we obviously got this move to the downside, your first idea might be, OK, where did we where did we bounce from? OK, and we actually bounced off of that daily. So that thirty thousand dollar low remained intact. We built a higher low and obviously that higher low was off of the daily. FYI, if you want to see this in obviously a video content, then George yesterday obviously does his daily live streams. This is where he's doing two live streams a day, a short five minute update, a longer like one to two hour long live stream. You know, it's like this. These updates are really helpful to start a routine. Sometimes it is helpful to have someone guide you every day in what they do. So you can do it for yourself using the same tools. And obviously, George is also a wonderful person, not only in his daily updates, but also very active in the Discord. So, you know, these levels that we're bouncing off of, these are obviously given by myself. I've done this myself in, in the Champions live stream on Sunday. I gave that level. But also, you know, you've got these daily updates every single day for the Champions by uh, Trader George, who's also, obviously also a really amazing trader. So that's just a little FYI. Uh, so we obviously did bounce off of that daily uh, to form that higher low. OK, so after we have formed that higher low, OK, there's one question that I want you to ask yourself right now. And that is this that I posted. We are obviously at that time. OK, at the value area high of the smaller range. Yeah, we're at the value area high of the smaller range. So you might be thinking to yourself, OK, Daniel, we're at the value area high. This is resistance. Um, why are you then posting things such as, come on, Bitcoin, we've, we've bounced off the daily level. We're obviously back up against the value area high. But I'm still saying to my team, come on, Bitcoin, we've took the lows now. Let, let's go up. You know, my only thought process, even though we're at resistance, is Bitcoin's going to continue its upwards trajectory. We are going to head up. We are going to continue to squeeze those short positions. Yeah, think about that for a minute. We're at resistance. Why am I still why am I still remaining bullish? OK, and this is the one and only factor. Yes, we are at resistance. We had just bounced off of support. We're back up at that level. But this is the reason why I foresaw us breaking upwards. OK, and it actually falls under the accumulation patterns. OK, so you can see here, this is what I'm teaching tomorrow, by the way, in the contenders live stream. But we have these different types of schematics within accumulation phases. OK, OK, and with these patterns, you know, what we're trading every day with the ranges, once you add on these schematics to the ranges, we can predict which way the range will break before it does. So I actually laid on top of this a, an accumulation schematic, and I foresaw that we were going to break up before we broke up. It led me to believe that 
basically this. I wouldn't mind seeing something like this, the higher low put in, and then a break to the upside, higher low break in, you know, higher low put in there at the daily, break to the upside based off of that accumulation schematic. Okay, that was the whole idea that I had going on here. So just an FYI, if you want to also learn about this, I'm dropping so much knowledge in tomorrow's live stream for the contenders and the champions. Um, you know, like, uh, <laughs> and this guy says here, uh, this is a lot, one that people have been waiting for a long time. Out of all of them, I believe this is the cherry on top. Take all you've learned from the modules, apply this new module coming out, and you'll be unstoppable. So yeah, obviously this is like, range trading on steroids, you know, it's going to be really, really, really powerful. But that's basically what I foresaw. Okay. And on top of this, I want to lay out a few more things that I saw for you. And then we're obviously going to move on to what's happening next. So obviously, I had an accumulation schematic, I had the idea of forming a higher low, getting people bearish before another rally to the upside. I knew we were on a US holiday, the volume was very fairly low. And I also knew we had formed a series of highs, which, you know, resting liquidity above the highs. And last of all, my idea was that a lot of people had been very, very bearish down at the lows. We'd seen continuous bullish CVD, diver CVD divergences on Bybit, and the other exchanges were showing bearish CVD divergences. Remember this? I got asked about this, and Bybit was the only one bullish. FTX, Binance was bearish. So my idea is, you know, we're just going to squeeze all these, like, this is kind of like where, you know, Binance is like the gambling exchanges where all the noobs trade. So it's like, Binance has a lot of volume, but they also have a load of bad traders. So it's like, yeah, let's just like squeeze all these noobs. Like everybody's really bearish. This this is going to fly. And that was my idea. So it's like this intuition, like this is what I wrote in my group this morning. It was like this intuition. Oh yeah, here we go. So yesterday, I just read the market really well. We're obviously at the value area high of the smaller range, resistance, but we have those great bullish CVD divergences on Bybit, and the other exchanges are obviously bearish. So the best play for me, taking in mind the holiday, was the drop to the daily before, you know, catching everybody off size, offside and rising, pretty much went exactly as predicted. And the only way that I can make these calls is because I have traded the same play thousands of times and it's like clockwork. But the best confluence for me was that intuition and that feeling of, hey, I, I just kind of have a really good idea what's gonna happen next. <laughs> and as people say here, like at the end of the day, um, you know, people will find that inspiring. People find that, you know, <laughs> being in the in the group for over a year and the scribbles on the chart still amaze me. So it's like these scribbles, they, they, they play out very well, but it's not out of luck or out of anything else. It's like this intuition, this feeling, and then you just see it play out time and time and time again. It's, it's obviously really nice. Um, well, and there we go. That is what we have seen thus far obviously bringing us up to $32,000. And now I wanna go over what I am looking at next, the next levels that we have here. Okay, so we have a few key levels. You can see I've got a few key levels here marked to the, well, one left key level that I'm gonna go over here to the upside, that's 32,000, let's just say 32,800. This is a zone. Please don't look at this as an exact dollar. This is a zone of resistance. Obviously, if we reclaim this is extremely bullish, well, yeah, we can definitely be looking up for a rally to $40,000, or at least $35,000, 35, $35 38, 40,000 dollars. But that, that key level that we have obviously signifying the, the old top of the range at around you know, 30 to 833K. And below us, this is the level that I find really interesting. Obviously, yesterday we're at the value area high, but we wanted to see a dip before an increase in price. You know, even though one can remain bullish, let's say, we obviously are at resistance. We cannot just long into resistance without any without any sort of retracement. This is like just really bad practice. You never just long into resistance. With, with, without a lower term time frame plan. The only way you can get into these trades is of a lower term time frame plans, okay? We obviously have a bigger level of support there around 30,400 and let's just say 30,400. Again, this is a zone. Please take this as a bit of a zone. Just as the top level is a zone, this bottom level is a zone. It's not an exact dollar. Um, so we're obviously looking at that zone as resistance. I will tell you where I got this from. This is the point of control of the uptrend. Okay, so from the uptrend that we've put in here, this is the point of control. So for me, a very significant level. Obviously, if we lose the point of control, it's going to look like a really big deviation of the top of the range, like a failed auction. Coming back in today, obviously, the US holidays closed. The stock markets are back open today. So this is going to be really, really, really telling. Okay, have we just seen the fake out of the range, a push up on, you know, kind of a fake out on a, on a holiday? 
and you know we've just faked out the range losing that point of control is going to be very 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 key to really give us you know that's a high probability okay or we you know we bull flag here we reclaim our key resistance to the upside and we continue to just short squeeze all the way up again you do not need to know with 100% certainty what's going to happen next there's no guarantees in trading there's no need to know with 100% what's going to happen next all you have to do is lay out your plans and be ready for either scenario it's like it's like we were saying here you know, <laughs> this is going to be a massive week for Bitcoin. We knew this yesterday. You have to be absolutely must be prepared. And, you know, we're, we're pretty much one of the best in the game of organizing the top trading plans. And this is being prepared with a bullish and a bearish scenario and then trading the one which comes to fruition. Okay, this is really, 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 really important. Some people don't kind of understand this, but you've got to be ready with levels to the upside, levels to the downside, and then trade when you actually have that confirmation reaction that you've been waiting for. You know, if you can get into that trade, you know, have your stop loss in place, have your target in place, and then just wait it out. Okay, so for me right now, I would personally be waiting for a little bit of a dip on Bitcoin or a little bit of a rise on Bitcoin for my next trade that I'm looking for. I am very much aware of the potential of the short squeeze, you know, don't get me wrong, I'm very much re ready for that. And if it happens, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm prepared for a move to the upside. But just at the same time, I'm also prepared for this to end in a fake out. I am prepared you know, for, for, for a failed auction type move. Okay, and if I'm not prepared for both of those scenarios, when one of the scenarios happens, let's say I'm only prepared for upside and we drop, well, then I'm going to get absolutely wrecked. And if I'm only prepared for a drop and we rise, then I'm going to get wrecked. But if I'm prepared for a drop and I'm prepared for a rise, I know which type of trades I'll be taking on both of those scenarios. You know, if I get a scenario that I've been planned for, then I'm going to take that trade. If a, if a, if a kind of a, a scenario happens which I'm not planned for, then I just simply don't take a trade. One has to remain patient. One has to know what they're looking for. And then when that, or if that plays out, you're ready, you're waiting, you execute. And it's like I said yesterday, yeah, uh, scared money don't make money. At the end of the day, you have to put your money where your mouth is on these trades. Um, but, you know, once you once you have these amazing plans, you, you know, you, you don't lack confidence. <laughs> it's like people would say, you know, somebody put in the group, um, Okay. Oh, yeah. The, by the way, that this is the sort of thing. That, yeah, there, there you go. Always make your own plan, but not going to lie. Having heads up from the boss is so nice. <laughs> but it's like when you start to gather statistics, I'm not going to actually load this up on the stream here. But once you kind of have like these statistics, oh, maybe I'll give you a quick. No, I'm not going to give the preview on this one. But, um, you know, once you have like really in-depth statistics, it's obviously from Tom, but like once you have these index statistics, you have really high probabilities of highs and lows, the time of the day, the, the day of the week. Uh, you know, where highs and lows are put in, you know, you have your statistics built up, for example, of like the highest win rates on which exchange, which is the most highest probability. You know, this is just adding confidence. And how do you have so much confidence? It is obviously with time and experience. That's how you build that intuition. It's kind of a, a mixture of intuition, experience and statistics that comes together. And, you know, you, you then lose that. Obviously, everybody starts off scared in trading because everybody's scared to lose money. And everybody does lose money in trading. A lot of people, when they first begin, are going to lose pretty much everything. But it's, you know, with those mistakes, you learn from them, you move on. And it's just like, it's just like, it's just like in Chart Champions. We have also, as like a, you know, as like a business, we've made a lot of mistakes. And I openly agreed that we've made a lot of mistakes. And just like in trading, people will make mistakes. If you learn from them, all is good. I think Chart Champions, we made a lot of mistakes. We've learned from them. We're making changes. And, you know, we're going for more professional route, focused, professional. Um, you know, we're making so much changes. And it comes off of, the, you know, feedback, constructive criticism, and just learning. <laughs> you know, so I'm just saying, like, whatever you're looking at, whether it's like a business, whether it's something about relationships, whether it's trading, you know, everybody makes mistakes. But it's that learning process that makes you better as a person overall. So, you know, yeah, for me, that's, that's you know, it in trading. It's the statistics, it's the intuition, it's the experience that comes together to, you know, let you kind of foresee these moves way before they happen. But of course, the cherry on top is once you've got that theory behind you. And again, if you want to learn about the accumulation patterns, which I truly believe is going to be some of my best work in a long time, um, you know, that's what I've got tomorrow. That's obviously over at, ladies and gentlemen, chartchampions.com, where you do have daily updates every single day if you want to get on the daily live streams, giving you a plan, helping you out. We obviously then have all of the theory. That's all over at chartchampions.com. We really, really are trying to, you know, improve ourselves and better ourselves. Um, 
So yeah, if you if you're that sort of interest, you can head over to the website and check that out. I'm just going to end by saying thank you ever so much. I truly hope you've learned something, taken something away, and you're ready for the next scenario here on the Bitcoin chart. Again, if you want more in-depth ideas, that's obviously given over in the Champions group. Um, but yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this free public video. Thank you ever so much, and uh, smash those like buttons. Thank you, and have an absolutely brilliant week ahead. Okay, I'll end with the quick disclaimer, of course, that, of course, none of this is financial advice. It's just an entertainment educational video only. So, yeah, thanks. See you over in the Discord and have a good day. Bye.